from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Mirantis Launchpad 2020. Brought to you by Mirantis. Welcome back, and I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's coverage of Mirantis Launchpad 2020. Of course, we're spending a lot of time talking about Kubernetes. We're going to be digging in, talking about uh, some of the important developer tooling uh, that, that Mirantis is helping to, to proliferate in the market, solve some real uh, important challenges in the space. So happy to welcome to the program, Miska Kaipienen. He is the Senior Director of Engineering with Mirantis. Miska, thanks so much for joining us. Welcome to theCUBE. Oh, thank you so much. All right, so, so Miska, I, I noticed you've got on the, the Contena uh, uh, sweatshirt. Uh, so you were the, the founder of the company, uh, did some tools. Uh, one of the tools that, that you and your team helped create uh, was Lens. Uh, you and your team joined Mirantis and, and recently uh, Lens was, was pulled in. So, so maybe if you could just give us a little bit about your background, you, know, you do some coding yourself, uh, the, the, the team that you have there, and uh, let, let's tee up the conversation because it's that Lens piece that we're going to spend a bunch of time talking about. Yeah, uh, so the background uh, of what we did, uh, basically, Contena, we started back in 2015. And uh, we had the focus on creating uh, technologies around the container orchestration technologies uh, to basically to make developer tooling uh, that are very easy to use uh, for, for the developers. So during the years at Contena, we did uh, many different types of products and uh, maybe the most interesting product that we created uh, was, uh, was Lens. And, uh, now really, when we joined Mirandis in, in January this year, uh, so we have been able to work on Lens and uh, actually since the Lens was made open source, fully open source in March this year, uh, so it's been really kind of picking up and now Mirandis acquired the whole technology so, so we can really start investing even more in the development. All right, so let, let, let's talk specifically about Lens. Uh, it, it's a teed up at the beginning. Uh, we're, we're talking about managing uh, multiple clusters. Gosh, you know, I think back to 2015, it was you know, early on, most people were still learning about Docker. Uh, you know, Docker swarms, Kubernetes, Mesos, there were, there were a lot of fights over how orchestration would be done. A little bit different discussion about uh, what developers were doing, how they scaled out configurations, how they managed us. So, uh, help us understand kind of the, that that core what Lens does, and you know how, how the product has matured and expanded uh, over those last five years. Yeah. So over the last five years, so originally Lens was uh, developed for for our internal product. Uh, so like Mesosphere and uh, and Docker and. Uh, they all had their own orchestration technologies uh, even before Kubernetes. And we also uh, started working on our own orchestration technology. And I'm a huge believer in, in when we are dealing with very complex technologies. So if you can visualize it and make it kind of more interesting to look at, uh, so it will kind of help with the adoption uh, and uh, it's, it's kind of more acceptable to the market. And uh, that's why we started doing Lens. And uh, over the years, we turned Lens to work with Kubernetes environments. And, uh, and nowadays, really, Lens is, is very much loved by the Kubernetes developers who are those people who need to deal with the Kubernetes clusters on a daily basis. So they are not necessarily those ops people, uh, who are creating those clusters, but they are the people who actually use those clusters. Well, it, it, of course, that, that general adoption is something that, uh, you know, super important. Uh, can you have some sh stats you can share on, uh, you talk about the, the love of developers. Uh, you said it's open source, it's available on, on GitHub, but, you know, how many people are using it? What, 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 what are some of those usage stats? Yeah, so it was interesting. So when we released uh, Lens open source under MIT license in March, so since then uh, we have been getting, in half a year, we have been getting uh, 8,000 stargazers on GitHub. That is kind of mind blowing because we tried to create projects and trying to create anything that would get a lot of traction uh, in the past, but, but 
you know, truly it, it only happened uh, just now uh, after after years of trying. So it has been since the last six months, uh, it's been just amazing. Uh, the adoption, we have more than 50,000 users uh, using Lens and the retention is great. You know, people are keep on coming back. So, so yeah, the numbers look very, very good uh, for Lens and we are just getting started. Yeah, well, it, it, it's it's something that this community uh, definitely is, is huge growth. Uh, anybody in this space remembers just the huge adoption uh, of Docker, uh, which of course uh, the enterprise piece of Docker is, is now part of Mirantis. Um, inside uh, those developers, help us understand a little bit more. You know, what is it that has them? You know, really not only looking at it at GitHub's, you know, starring it as you said, they're the stargazers. It's like a favorite for those that aren't in the system. Um, you know. I've had a chance to, you know, look at some of the demos, and you know, it seems rather straightforward. But if you could, just in your words, ex explain what it is that, that it it solves for developers that otherwise um, they either had to do themselves or they had to cobble together a lot of different tools. <laughs> we know developers out there. Uh, the wonderful thing is uh, there's no shortage of tools to choose from. It's about you know the right tool that can do the right thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Lens, uh, we are calling it IDE for a reason, so, so we are talking about IDE for Kubernetes developers. And what does it mean actually, is that we are taking all those necessary tools and technologies and uh, packaging them, integrating them seamlessly together for the purpose of uh, making it more easy for developers to deploy, uh, operate, observe, inspect, uh, their workloads that are running on Kubernetes uh, clusters. And uh, I think the main benefits uh, that Lens will provide uh, for these developers is that if you are a newcomer to the Kubernetes ecosystem, so Lens gives you a very easy way to learn Kubernetes because it's so visual. Uh, and uh, for more experienced users, uh, it just radically improves the uh, the, let's say the speed of business and uh, and the way how you can perform things uh, things uh, with your clusters. Uh, so w w one of the pieces uh, that that Lens does is that that multi cluster uh, management. So first of all, uh, I believe it, as you said, you know it's open source and can work with. Uh, is it any certified Kubernetes that out there, whether it be from the public cloud? Uh, companies like you know VMware and Red Hat that have Kubernetes. Of course, you know Mirantis has Kubernetes too. Um, and, and secondly, uh, I, I think you teased out a little bit, but you know help help us understand a little bit. Um, Multi-cluster management is something that the you know big players you hear you know uh, Azure and Google Cloud talking about how they look at managing not only other environments, but oh yeah, we can have other clusters and we can help you manage it. I think that's more on the on the op side of things as opposed to, as you said, this is this is really a developer tool set. Yeah, so of course all the organizations they they want to most likely have some sort of centralized system where where they can uh, manage multiple clusters and some companies provide systems for on premises and uh, some public cloud vendors they provide systems for provisioning those uh, clusters on their own own systems and then we have all, also the kind of multi cloud uh, management systems uh, most of these technologies they are really designed for the to, for the operation side, so how the IT administrations can uh, manage these multiple clusters. So now, if you look at the situation from the developers' perspective, they are now given access to a certain number of clusters from different environments. And by the way, some of these clusters are also running on their local uh, development environments on their laptops. So what Lens is doing is basically it provides a unified user experience across all these clusters, no matter, matter what is the flavor of the Kubernetes, it can be the Minikube, it can be from AKS, it can be Mirantis Enterprise, uh, Docker Enterprise offering or, or whatever. So it kind of brings them all together and makes it very easy to navigate and go around and, and do your work. 
Yeah, well, that, that, that's, you know, the, the promise of Kubernetes uh, isn't that, you know, it just levels the playing field uh, amongst everything. Uh, as as I, I've talked to the founders of Kubernetes, uh, you know, people like Joe Beta said, it's not a silver bullet, it's a thin layer, uh, but that skill set is what's so important because there is a lot of difference between every platform you, that you deal with. So uh, a, as a developer, uh, it, it's nice to have some tools that I can work across those environments. Um, from a developer standpoint, I think it's on the document, Windows, Linux, uh, you know, Mac, uh, you know, works across those environments. Um, wh what do you hear from your customers? Say, you know, how, how are they using it? Um, you know, is this something that they're like, oh, hey, I can go make an adjustment um, on my mobile uh, when I'm not necessarily in the office? Uh, you know, what, what, are we not quite there yet? <laughs> Uh, actually, it's kind of funny because sometimes we hear this type of request that uh, that we would like to have a mobile app version of Lens. Uh, I don't know how that would actually work in practice. Uh, uh, so we haven't been doing anything on that front yet. Uh, I think still the the most common use case is uh, that developers they are given access to clusters from from somewhere and they are just desperately trying to find. Uh, kind of convenient way how to navigate around these different clusters and uh, how to manage their workloads. And uh, I think uh, Lens is hitting the sweet spot in there uh, with the ease of use. All right, so uh, let me understand. It, 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 it's been open sourced, uh, yet Morantis owns it. Is there uh, you know, a service or support? Does this tie into uh, other products uh, in, in the Morantis portfolio? How, how, do, how do people get it? You know, what do they need to, if anything, pay for it? And you know, help us understand how this fits into the broader Morantis story. Yes, so it's still kind of early days. So we just kind of announced that Lens is now part of uh, Mirandi's, uh, let's say, portfolio. Uh, so I must say that still the kind of main focus for us is uh, around improving Lens and making it better for developers. So that's much more important than trying to think about the ways how, how potentially we could monetize this. So, but there are plans going ahead, going around uh, uh, for, for different ways how we can better support bigger enterprises who want to start using Lens uh, in a big scale. Well, yeah, that's, that's so important. Of course, you know, developers, we need to, you know, lower the friction, help them adopt things fast. Um, Misko, what, what, just get your, your general viewpoint though. One, one of the, the big value propositions that Mirantis has is of course, uh, allowing enterprises to take advantage of, uh, of these new types of solutions, uh, especially today uh, around Kubernetes. So uh, help us understand from your standpoint, uh, you know, the, the philosophy of what your team's helping to build and uh, the customer engagements that you're having. Yes, uh, so Mirantis, of course, has a broad portfolio of products and, uh, and many of those products, of course, are related to Kubernetes. And uh, so we have many products, which I'm also kind of uh, the leading development efforts around those. Uh, so some of the products are related to how to manage uh, image rep repositories and uh, registries. Uh, some of them are related to how to handle the Helm charts, which has basically become the de facto packaging format for, for Kubernetes applications. And we are kind of trying to bring all these different products and technologies together in a way that make it even more easy for developers then to access through Lens. So it's still a little bit work in progress, of course, uh, since the Lens acquisition is quite new, but, uh, but uh, we are on track there, trying to make a beautiful one kind of experience for, for our customers. All right, well, final question I have for you. As you said, it's new there, but uh, give us a little taste as to, uh, you know, feedback you're getting from the community, uh, anything we should be looking at uh, on kind of the, 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 the near to midterm roadmap when it comes to Lens. Oh yeah, so we are just barely scratching the surface of the potential on, on what we can do with Lens. So one of the big features that we will be releasing still uh, during this year in, in a couple of months time uh, is going to be the extension API, which will allow all these cloud native technology ecosystem vendors 
to bring their own technologies uh, easily available and accessible uh, through Lens. Uh, so it is possible for third parties to extend uh, the user interface uh, with their own kind of unique features and uh, visualizations. And uh, we are already actively working with, uh, with certain partners uh, to integrate their technologies through this extension API. Uh, so that's going to be huge. It's going to be game changer. Well, the great thing about an open source project is people can go out, they can grab it now, they can give feedback, uh, you know, participate in the community. Uh, Miska, th thank you so much for joining us and uh, great, great to chat. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, stay with us for more coverage of Mirantis Launchpad 2020. I'm Stu Miniman and thank you for watching theCUBE.